Large language models are powering tools like ChatGPT that are able to achieve various natural language tasks. However, as powerful as these language models are, they do have weaknesses and limitations. As we saw in the main video, the training of a language model uses chunks of data extracted from internet web pages, this extraction being done without supervision. This is made so to provide the model a lot of data to perform its training with. Yet this lack of supervision during the data collection can make the quality of the training corpus less reliable. This, as we'll see, is at the heart of many of the limitations that these models have. Let's focus first on the problem of bias found in those data, that is to say, an automatic way of thinking, which doesn't rely on any reasoning. These biases can be unfair and reinforce stereotypes. As the model was trained to reproduce the data it saw during its training, every bias found in the training data will necessarily be reflected or even increased in the final model. For instance, we see here that not much work is needed to reveal the bias present in large models. These biases, if not controlled, will then be reflected in the productions and uses made of these models. Uses in domains like education, artistic production, or more concretely, job hiring. However, these last few years, the task of alignment was at the heart of many work around language models. The goal is to align language models with human expectations and thus reduce the biases they may express. Currently, this alignment is done by asking humans to judge the model's outputs, so that it can adapt and reduce any unwanted behavior. This was done with ChatGPT, for example. This helped reduce the bias in the model's outputs. However, this bias is still present, but now comes from the humans employed to align the model. Correcting bias is in fact not only a technical challenge, but also a social, political and philosophical one. The very notion of bias varies from different communities and cultures. Another weakness about these language models is the fact that their knowledge is frozen. Their training is done on a corpus of data at a given time, and once this training is done and the model is deployed, its knowledge is fixed, new information can't be added to it without undergoing another training. This makes the model unable to access recent news and also makes it impossible for us to correct any errors that we may have found in its knowledge. We talked about it in the main video, any knowledge expressed by a language model can't be traced back to its corresponding data in the training corpus. When the model learns to perform the next word prediction task on a certain data, it doesn't record the source of this data. Thus, once the training is done, we can't say how a certain data influenced the model's parameters. The whole system is a black box, the different data of the training corpus having influenced in some way the billions of parameters of the model. Finally, regarding the limitations caused by data, it is important to talk about the amount of it that is required to train large language models like ChatGPT. Indeed, during their training, these models receive several hundred billion words. For comparison, a 13-year-old child has been exposed to around 100 million words since birth, which is several orders of magnitude fewer than the number of words processed by the largest language models. This shows that these models are quite inefficient, but also raises the issue that it is now difficult for an organization to build a large language model due to the computational resources required to process such vast amounts of data. This is thus a privilege to have such a model, a privilege currently held by large companies, which do not deploy their models openly and are not necessarily transparent regarding the specific data used during training. However, there are open initiatives that are fully transparent about the training of their model. For example, Bloom, a competing model to ChatGPT, is the result of an international collaboration among different research laboratories. These initiatives are encouraging and important to ensure the dissemination of the technology. Language models are known to exhibit hallucinations. They generate explanations, produce what seems to be general truths that are both false and completely made up, not even present in the training corpus. The problem with such hallucinations is that we can't distinguish them from the other real affirmations given by the model. In fact, they are even indistinguishable to the model itself. Therefore, when the model discloses them, it appears completely certain of its response. For somebody that isn't aware of this problem, and isn't an expert of the subject he asks about, such hallucinations can lead to significant consequences. 
One consequence of the very nature of the training process used by these language models, which is purely statistical, is the fact that these models have no practical understanding of the concepts they manipulate in textual language. We can see it in this example. The model clearly doesn't have an understanding of movement. Language models have been trained to generate text based on textual regularities that are present in the training data. Thus, they never had the chance to interact with the concepts of everyday life, like a human would have done since his birth. Here, with the example of the anaconda, the Alama 2 model clearly shows that it has no physical representation of the situation it describes, because according to it, an anaconda cannot enter a mall with 10 foot high ceilings, because anacondas have a length of 30 feet. However, a whole field of machine learning research is currently focusing its efforts to enable these models to understand, for example, physical concepts. To conclude, another sensitive point regarding these language models relates to the interpretation we make of their responses. As we know, these models have no intentionality when they communicate with us. However, their responses appear so credible and well-developed that it is easy for a human to attribute intention to the model and believe that it constructed its response by considering the human it is conversing with, which is, as we saw, not the case. As giant language models are being deployed in an increasing number of daily services used by millions or even billions of people, this video has shown that they have certain limitations. They reproduce and even amplify biases present in the training data, and they can even generate entirely false information. These hallucinations, combined with the inability to trace the source of information, necessitate the user to be cautious with the responses of these models. Additionally, these models have no practical understanding of the physical concepts they manipulate. Finally, Although the situation is evolving, most of these giant models are controlled by a small number of actors who have sole authority over their use and distribution.